Oh, and Thomas Worth, yeah. our other uh, uh, Battalion 2 coordinator. Yeah, all yours, all yours. Welcome, welcome. Oh, everyone's showing up now, this is great. What is great about this is this is all new faces. Up until, up until now, it was always the same faces who were like, you're really well trained, you're really well trained. Anyway, my name's Kevin, uh, you're in Theory Labs, welcome. This is uh, Camo's Earthquake 101, otherwise known as a humble guide on how not to die. Um, so there's a lot of things that this class is, a lot of things that this class is not. What this class is not, um, this is not the zombie apocalypse. Um, that, could be, that could be next month. Uh, this is also not doomsday preppers. Uh, this is not uh, arm yourselves to the teeth and shoot your neighbors and it's the end of the world and, or any of that. Um, it is also not uh, dead white guys who give dates in the future uh, saying that the earth is going to end on a particular time and date or things of that nature. So this has nothing to do with mythology. This has to do with seismic science. Um, okay, so but what this is, and all the experts jump in if you feel that I'm wrong. <laughs> if I go off script, which I often do. Um, this is an overview of earthquakes, how they work, facts and fiction about earthquakes, uh, what will likely happen during a major quake. So this is not so much about the little ones that we get. This is ones that are, we're talking about the major quake and or the big one, okay? Um, and how do we do, what do we do as individuals, as a community, to be ready for what is ultimately an inevitability? Uh, the thing is, just because we have not had an earthquake in a long, long time, they, seismically, they have to happen. We have to have a big quake at some point. Scientists predict within the next 30 years or so, and they were saying that five, six years ago. Um, and how do we get further involved in community preparedness? I have a number of people here who are part of CERT, Community Emergency Response Team. I encourage you to get trained, um, if not even just being a part of CERT, but at, at least to be able to know how to take care of yourself, your family, your friends, your household. Okay, so what is an earthquake? This sounds very basic, but an earthquake is a sudden slipping of movement uh, of a portion of the Earth's crust or plates caused by a sudden release of stresses. Uh, earthquake uh, epicenters are usually less than 25 miles below the Earth's surface and are accompanied and followed by a series of vibrations. Earthquakes occur without obvious warning and can happen anywhere in our country. Uh, earthquakes are such a risk because shaking ground can cause buildings to move off their foundations or collapse, uh, damage utilities, structures, roads, infrastructure. They can cause fires and explosions and cause structural uh, in instability such as dam failures and can trigger flash floods. Earthquakes can also uh, uh, trigger uh, landslides, avalanches, or tsunamis. And after an earthquake, it is important to listen to emergency instructions. One of those things where you would find that would be to have an emergency radio with NOAA on it. Um, that way, they would put emergency traffic out over that radio. So make sure you have a NOAA-enabled radio. Uh, that's, the big, that's one of the big things you have because communication most likely will be out, your power will be out, your TV will be out. Um, we don't know about actual radio stations of how they are up to <coughs> snuff. They might be compromised, but NOAA will put out emergency traffic over those frequencies. Um, together, all these types of damages threaten lives, property, and the environment. Now, if anyone has any questions, feel free to just jump in. This, I want to keep this casual and, you know, I want to benefit you. So if you have any questions, please, please let me know. Um, there is no seasonal or yearly cycle to earthquakes. Um, they can happen at any time, anywhere, and major quakes appear to occur in cycles between 50 and 275 years. So there are cycles to them. Now, that doesn't mean it keeps to the cycle. Um, as for us, um, our cycle is about 150 years for a major quake. But it has been 300, over 300 years since we've had a major quake. And we'll, we will get to that as well. An earthquake may last for seconds or minutes. Uh, with all aftershocks occur for months after the major quake. Um, this is happening now in Ecuador and Japan. They are still consistently getting aftershocks all the time. I'm seeing them pop up on our feeds. So that is a normal, that is a normal occurrence after an earthquake. Okay. okay, the Richter scale. A lot of people can misunderstand the Richter scale, uh, but earthquakes are classified based on um, the Richter scale. Um, small quakes being 5 to 5, 9, moderate 6 to 6, 9, uh, major 7 to 7, 9. Um, these occurred with the, the, uh, the Japan quake and the great quakes, 8 or greater, um, like uh, 
Well, well, actually, Ecuador is still in the major category. Um, the Richter scale measures earth movement caused by an earthquake. The Richter scale has a logarithmic base. So each increment of the scale is multiplied by a factor of 10. Okay, so it's not like it just kind of gradually grows up. It is multiplied by, again, a factor of 10. For example, an earthquake of a magnitude 8.6 would not be twice as much as a 4.3, but it would actually be 10,000 times as strong. So you multiply it by 10 every whole number as you go up. Um, the tenfold is in regard to amplitude. So if you see a wave, amplitude is the length of the wave. So if it's, this is small, this is bigger. That's the way earthquakes work. Everything works in waves. Um, the actual energy released by an earthquake increases 31 times for each whole number increment. So 26 urban areas in all parts of the United States are identified as carrying significant risks, risks of earthquakes. The western United States, particularly along the San Andreas Fault in California, uh, the Cascadia, yay us, uh, the Cascadia subduction zone in western Oregon and Washington and up the Alaskan coast. The New Madrid Fault Line in Missouri, yes, these guys get earthquakes all the time. Um, right now, Oklahoma, Oklahoma is now the most active seismic zone on the planet, mostly doing, uh, having to do with in, uh, injection wells, however. Um, drilling on a fault line is simply a bad idea. Bad idea. The last threes that we had, all injection wells. You look on Google Maps, you go to them, injection well, less than half a mile away. That's, that, you can look that up yourself. Uh, and there's absolutely no proof of it whatsoever. That's the first thing they come out. There's, that just cannot be related at all. Cannot be related at all. Not possible. Corporate pockets. Uh, a few pockets on the East Coast, including coastal South, South, uh, South Carolina and New England, in fact. Um, more than 75 million Americans in 39 states face significant risk of earthquakes. California's 17 million people face the highest risk, followed by the residents of Western Washington State and four, pe four million people are within the destructive reaches of the New Madrid fault line. So, um, so again, anyone could be affected by them, but you know, that's, this is the nature of it. Hundreds of tremors are felt each year, particularly in California, except lately, that was my injection there. Uh, major earthquakes are rare, however. Five major earthquakes have occurred in the last century in the United States, and they have occurred in 1994 Northridge earthquake. Who was here for it? Woo! Woo! That was a ride. That was a ride. I was telling like my, my whole CD collection tried to kill me. You know, I was able to sneak out. I was able to sneak out a uh, a phone call to my parents uh, short, right after it happened to let them know when they woke up and they heard the news I wasn't dead. Then the landline went out, and we were on the radio hearing about all the uh, the freeways that had collapsed and all the rest of it. And Ventura Boulevard on fire. Uh, that was absolutely insane. Uh, it was January 17th at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, it, dura it lasted for about 10 to 20 seconds, a very long 10 to 20 seconds, by the way. Um, They're calling it a magnitude 6.7. I grew up thinking it was a 7.2 for many, many years, and I believe that they have downgraded it for insurance purposes because when it first came out, it was 7.2. It was 7.2 for a long time, and all of a sudden, magically, it's 6.7 because there's a certain point, right, when insurance kicks in, for a city, yeah, and uh, so it's like, eh, we'll make it a little smaller. So didn't it used to also be that a seven was considered a moderate? Uh, it may have, and I think they just, because I remember it was seven two, it was seven two, it was seven two, and I looked it up at six seven, I'm like, eh, I don't think so. Uh, Twenty billion dollars in damage, uh, 57 to 72 people killed. Some of this was directly involved with the quake, others were secondary deaths involving heart attacks, and there was actually a whole release of just like spores and things from uh, release of buildings and things like that, which people got sick and died from afterwards. Now, the weird thing about this one, it produced a ground acceleration that was uh, the highest ever inc uh, instrumentally recorded in an urban area in North America and felt as far away as Las Vegas. Um, damage occurred up to 85 miles away. And it was a collapse of the Interstate 10, the New Hall Pass Exchange, and Route 14. I saw that live. It was horrifying. We watched that motorcyclist, the, cop, the, the officer, die live on air. It was horrifying. Um, then we had the 1989 Loma Prieta earthquake. Anyone around for that? Okay. This one, okay, was, uh, duration was uh, 8 to 15 seconds, 6.9, uh, 5 to 6 billion dollars damage, 63 people killed, over 3,000, almost 4,000 people injured. All right, that, oh, the Selmer quake. 
1971, somewhere clear. Uh, okay. Anyone else around for that? Yeah. Yeah. Woo! yeah, I was not around for this. Um, but this one, it was like, um, it occurred early in the morning of February 9th at 6 a.m., 12 seconds, six and a half to 6.7 uh, magnitude. Uh, they saved uh, $553 million in damage and 64 people were killed. And then the great 1964 Alaskan earthquake. This one was ridiculous. I mean, yeah, look, yeah. check this out. Check that out. That's crazy. Yeah, it's just like yeah. the trees pointing in different directions. This one, okay, this one was crazy. Okay, um, 438, uh, 4 minutes and 38 seconds on March 7th, 5.36 p.m., 9.3 magnitude earthquake. Um, the damage at that time, 311 million, although that, I'm sure, I don't trust that figure. That, that has to be wrong. Um, for yeah, that's not a, that's not adjusted. This, that, that, that's, that's not, that figure's not totally. There just wasn't that much there. Yeah. Well, there also wasn't that much there, too. But 139 people were killed. Um, they, it launched two tsunamis um, that uh, reached as far as Los Angeles, and it had effects in Texas and the Florida Everglades. Now, the thing that made this a tsunami is this is a subduction zone. When it means a subduction zone, the plates go underneath each other. So it kind of does this, it builds up pressure, and then boom, it did that. It launched a massive amount of material into the ocean and just shot this wave that felt hit Los Angeles. And like I said, it actually raised the water in the, in the Florida Everglades. Just like in the Northwest right now? Yes, exactly. Well, yes, the Northwest is actually a subduction zone. We are not, thankfully. So we don't have any risk of tsunamis here unless they come from someplace else. Uh, so, but this, this also gave rise to the USGS, which is the United States, uh, the US Geological Survey. Because um, they were so fascinated by how this happened, we finally formed this, this organization. And then we had the great 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Look at that. Look at that, yes. That's horrifying. Little dead horses, gosh. And uh, we'll get to why that is also important as well. 5.12 a.m., Wednesday, April 18th, 1906. Uh, the duration was not recorded. Um, 7.8 does not sound like that big, um, but $10.5 billion adjusted. Over 3,000 casualties, uh, a tsunami, and massive fires. The fires are the ones that caused 90% of the damage. Um, the earthquake and the resulting fire are remembered as one of the worst uh, natural disasters in history of the United States alongside the Galveston Hurricane of 1900 and the Hurricane Katrina in 2005. The death toll from the earthquake and resulting fires remains the greatest loss of life from a natural disaster in California's history. Look at that. Then we have the 1960 Valdiva earthquake. This is the largest earthquake ever recorded. Um, Photographs are not that dramatic, however. Is hmm? that Chile? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Chile is very. It's a very, 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 very active seismic zone. Very, very active. Um, and it sent. And it sent uh, tsunamis our way in in the past. Eleven to thirteen minutes. Can you imagine a nine point five earthquake that lasted up, up to almost thirteen minutes? This had to be absolutely horrifying for people. Um, Adjusted probably six, almost $6.4 billion in damage. Casualties were, could range any from where from there to 6,000 people. And this one was interesting because it was preceded by two quakes that would be massive in their own right, an 8.6 and an 8.1. So oftentimes there are pre-quakes to larger quakes. And I remember during Northridge, that was what was freaking us out, was that, is there a bigger one coming? You know, because that, that could have been a possibility. We were waiting around for something larger to come, come, up, come on down the pike. Um, 3,000 people injured. 2 million people were made homeless. Uh, $500 million in damages uh, in southern Chile. And tsunamis caused 61 deaths. $75 million of damage to Hawaii. 138 deaths and $50 million damage to Japan. 32 dead and missing in the Philippines and a half a, half a million dollars damage to the west coast of the United States. That's, now that's where we are as subject to tsunamis, when they come from someplace else. Okay, now these were the deadliest earthquakes in recent history. I've added this to the presentation to make it more updated. But this is, this is great. The, the Indian Ocean earthquake, 
280,000 people dead. All right, and this one surprised me. A Haiti earthquake ranges anywhere from 160,000 to 360, 316,000 people dead in Haiti. And that's the USGS number. I did not think it was that big. Um, that, again, a horrifying number. And you see the rest, 100,000, 87,000. And the deadliest earthquake ever recorded was in 1556. Um, it was an 8.3, but 830,000 people approximately that they could guess from that time period were dead. And this, to bring us up to date, um, the Japan earthquake, which just happened, this is, these are the current numbers. This is, still, this is still fluid because they're still finding people as we speak. April 14th and 16th, 6.5 and a 7.3. The deaths are 48 currently right now and counting. Um, there's over 1,200 injuries, 9,000 homes destroyed, and there's over 100,000 people in shelters. Uh, the cost right now they're estimating to be almost $3 billion. And then Ecuador. Poor, poor Ecuador right now. Uh, Ecuador, April 16th, 2016. Recent memory, guys. This is, this is the latest thing. This is the reason why I actually decided to have this presentation as quickly as, uh, as I did. Um, it was a 7.8. Uh, right now, there are currently, as of today, 654 people uh, dead and counting. There's 130 missing, over, oh, almost 13,000 uh, injuries. <coughs> right now, 7,000 7, buildings, including two hospitals, are destroyed. Um, the buildings damaged are uh, 608, which has to be, that has to be a wrong figure, but that's what I got. Um, 119 schools impacted, in fact, impacting 100,000 children. Um, there are over almost 27,000, uh, just over 26,000 people in shelters, and the cost is two to three billion dollars in damage right now. And then, so here's the here's the thing: why are sometimes the larger earthquakes causing less damage and death, and sometimes the smaller earthquakes <coughs> are causing much more damage and, and death? And that has to do with a bunch of factors, including location, obviously, to the earthquake, uh, the magnitude, naturally, um, the depth of it. The lower the earthquake, the more the earth kind of absorbs it. So if it's closer to the surface, it's going to cause more damage. Um, obviously, distance from the epicenter. If you have uh, an earthquake in the middle of the ocean, it's obviously not going to cause as much damage as something inland. If it's in a city or not in a city, these seem obvious. But these are some of the reasons. Yes? Did you forget uh, last year's Kathmandu uh, uh, over at the Nepal? Yeah, that one's that one's on the list, too. I, I was going through so many different quakes to, to put it in. It, it almost... It's, it, it, it just almost didn't make the list. I, 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 I went through so many earthquakes in the past, in the past month, but that's yet, yet another one in the one in Nepal. Yeah, that was huge too. That was huge too. I, I, I didn't want to overbear, overload you with like death and destruction for the entire thing, so I kind of hit the, the, the bigger ones at the time, but Kathmandu <laughs> was another huge one. Um, and also lo lo uh, local geographic um, conditions. The nature of the soil, are you in bedrock, are you in sand? That tells you how the, the waves are gonna propagate through, through the ground, ground liquefies in areas. And then uh, secondary effects, uh, people triggering landslides, fires, floods, tsunamis, obviously San Francisco, um, most of it fire, most of it fire. Um, architecture, this is huge, obviously, huge. This is why Haiti was so devastating, it's why Nepal was so devastating, and why Los Angeles, Northridge was not as much. You know, this makes a huge amount of difference. And then I added a couple, uh, which is obviously population density. The more people in an area, obviously, the more likely of, of, of damage and, um, and death. And then we have emergency response. How many emergency responders uh, to the population? In Los Angeles, we have 3,000 LAFD, Los Angeles Fire Department, to 4 million people in Los Angeles. And only 1,000 of them are on shift at one time. Obviously, they would pull from their, from their people if they could, but the difficulty with this is that in a major event, like a major earthquake, they're gonna spend the first few days assessing the city. They're not gonna be coming to your door to fix your arm or bring you a sandwich. So 911 is going to be useless. I think so, a lot of LAFD don't actually live in, in LA City. And there's that, there's that as well. There's that as well. They come in for their shift, but then they, they're outside the city. And also the fire department and other emergency services are going to be possibly impacted and compromised as well. And then um, 
Then the other thing, which is always what's really important here, is the lack of preparation. People not having their stuff together. Most people believe that in an emergency, the most, the, the biggest, the biggest myth people have is that the fire department and help is on its way, and we'll work it out. That's not going to happen in a major, in a major event. And the thing that kind of freaks me out the most, if you look, these are all the major quakes in the last month or so. That's the one starting with Japan. Yeah. Or did it start before then? Uh, let's see. Where's number one? Uh, there's Japan's up there. Uh, stuff in Alaska That's down there, two. Chile. These are the major quakes. Guess what's the silent area, guys? Us. Us. We're, we're, we're the quiet area right now, and we've been quiet for a long, long time. Okay, now this is my favorite part of the presentation. Earthquakes, fact and fiction. This is, this is, this is my favorite part. So this is where you get to participate. Yeah, I saw San Andreas. I know, yes. San Andreas, yeah, great educational tool for the public. Right there, the building shattering like, you know, like peanut brittle. Okay. This is the biggest and most, one of the most important questions that we can answer today, which is when an earthquake strikes, what do you do? One, you don't move. You stay right where you are until things settle down. Get out of the building immediately. Uh, get under something sturdy and hang on. Get in a doorway or get alongside a wall using uh, what they call the triangle of life concept. For those who know the answer, be quiet. What do you think? Huh? Three. 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 Get under uh, something sturdy and hang on. Okay. Any other thoughts? Well, I say five. Five. Get alongside a wall. Triangle of life. Any other thoughts? Number one. Number one. Do not move. Get yeah. Stay right where you are until things settle. Um, what do you think? I said three. Three. What do you say? I said three. Three. Say three. Three or five. Three or five. Okay. Four, get in a doorway, okay. Anyone else, you guys? One, okay, do not move. Going for two. Going for two, get out of the building immediately. Okay. No, can't be one. Can't be one, all right. The answer is get under something sturdy and hang on. Um, like I said, drop, hang on and you, just, you hold on. So if, 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 I were, if there was an earthquake hit right now, I'd get under this table, hang on, close my eyes, cover my head until it goes. Why are the others false? Especially, here's the one, because a lot of people think, number two, get out of the building immediately. This is why you don't do that. Okay, building's jacked up. Building's totally jacked up. But as soon as you walk out the door, see all that rubble and glass? This is where most injuries and deaths happen in an earthquake. People freak out, they run for the exit, they would have been fine had they stayed right where they are, got under something, and they get killed as soon as they walk out their door. It is the worst thing you can do. Um, here's another example of that. Same thing, building's jacked up, but you'd be dead if you walked outside, are okay? Just with uh, large buildings, are we talking also about regular wooden homes? Yes, the same, the same. Get under something and hold on. Because of our architectural standards, especially here in California, the likelihood of building collapse is actually very, very rare. Okay, um, the things that we're going to—I'd be worried about—are these lights, <laughs> the radar dish. But the one thing I don't want to go is out there where the power lines and glass and brick are falling down. Now, will buildings collapse? Yes, but but statistically. You're, go you're, you're better to survive if you stay and get under something, okay? Now, the whole thing with the triangle of life is um, it is a hotly contested uh, myth. It has basically been debunked. Um, it makes logical sense. It would be as you get beside something so that when things fall, you're in the little gap. Now, it's not that that can't happen, but the way that was derived has basically been dismissed in terms of... In terms of uh, in terms of uh, actual science, you know? What they did is this guy got this big, huge grant and basically de demolished a building so everything just pancaked and put dummies and stuff here and there. And then, but were, that's not how things happen in an earthquake. There's all this lateral shifting and things like that. It's not that the, also that wouldn't work in certain rare circumstances, but it's not the way to go. Okay, so 
Drop, cover, and hold on. Get under a table or bench, hold on to uh, one with the legs, and close your eyes. Close your eyes, obviously, because things are breaking, shattering, falling down. Um, if there are no table or desk, sit against the wall, uh, away from things that might fall on you, and away from windows, bookcases, or uh, tall, heavy furniture. Uh, wait in your safety spot until the shaking stops, and then check to see if you are hurt. Checking others around you then too, and then move carefully to look out for uh, fallen things within your place. There's going to be aftershocks. Smaller earthquakes, uh, quiet soon after, so be prepared to return to your safety spot. So if that happens, we should be aware that aftershocks are on their way. Be on the lookout for fires, and if there isn't a fire, uh, alarms and sprinklers may go off, especially <laughs> if you're in a, a commercial building. And if you have to leave the building after that shaking stops, use the stairs, obviously never, not the elevators. And if you're outside, stay outside and move away from buildings, trees, lights, and especially power lines, crouch down and cover your head. Questions? We all clear? Good? All right. Uh, let me ask you one question. Yes. Um, any of this stuff, can we get this off of uh, 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 your slides off of? The Absolutely. And all this is also <laughs> readily available uh, online. And you look for any kind of earthquake preparedness, all this stuff will be online. I'm going to make this presentation available online along with the PowerPoint. So, because sometimes it's a lot to, it's a lot to absorb. Uh, they also say if you don't have a table to get under, not to do this, just get against the wall, but try to get into a corner. Mm -hmm. Because the corner is the strongest structure in the building. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, the other thing um, about the, the doorway thing. The doorway is a myth that arose out of the San Francisco earthquake. They were looking at the, the photographs of it, and they saw a lot of pictures with, like, doorways, like, still in place. It doesn't mean that they're any more architecturally sound than any of the rest of the building. They just happen not to fall over in, the, in that place. <laughs> those were very strong stone doorways. And those are also big, these massive stone doorways. Yeah, yeah. And just like, you stand in a doorway like this, it's no more safe than anything else, and you get smacked with a door yeah. is what's going to end up happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, little earthquakes relieve the pressure of larger earthquakes. True or false? False. False. Who else? True. False. Wow. Hey, good answers. False. False. Little earthquakes. Uh, there are never enough small quakes to eliminate the occasional large event. It would take 32 magnitude fives, 1,000 magnitude fours, and 32,000 magnitude threes to equal the energy of a magnitude six event. Okay, so it's like, oh, look, we just had a three. Oh, that means it's less than the, another possible earthquake. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Um, the, math, the math tells you otherwise. So, yes, that is a, uh, that is a, that is a falsehood. Ah, uh, here's the big one. California's going to fall into the ocean. True or false? False. Makes for a good movie. It makes for a good movie. I think this is from 2012. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible movie. Man, they got, those guys made it to the airport from, from downtown Los Angeles in like three minutes. It was amazing. Yeah. During an earthquake. And, and, the took out there. and then, the, yeah, exactly. It's just like, oh, that film, man. Okay. Um, no, this is, this is false. The ocean is not a great hole in which California can fall into. It's absolutely impossible that California will be swept out to sea. Instead, um, Southwestern California is moving horizontally northwards toward Alaska, and as it slides past the uh, central and eastern California. The dividing point is the San Andreas Fault System, which extends from the Salton Sea uh, in the south uh, to uh, Cape Mendocino in the north. This 800 mile long fault is the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Here's the weird thing about California. We are on our own plate. We're on a different plate. How the Lord set that up, I don't know. But we are on our own plate. That's the weirdest thing. We have one big body uh, landmass, but California is on, its, is on the Pacific plate. And these two plates are pushed together. And that's <coughs> lucky us. Lucky us. All right. Ah, this fault line can rupture open during an earthquake. True or false? False. False? True. True. What do you think? False? Okay, this looked really, really good in San Andreas. However, it is false. Uh, the ground moves across a fault, not away from it. If the fault could open up, there's no, there's no friction, so there would be no quake. So the plates are doing this, so there's no way for the ground, a fault would do this, because otherwise there's just no, there's no quake, and no dynamic, dynamic by which it could do that. So that does not happen. Now, when there is gapping, 
separates slightly and then the dirt just kind of fills in a little bit. Yes. It just dents down slightly. Yeah, because what you'll see, gap open. You, will see, you will see cracks, you will see things like that, um, but it's also that's from things pushing up, like you saw in the Alaska quake, things pushing up and things cracking, or you saw like in the Japan quake, like you would see things where it's doing this and cracks are opening up this. That's the liqu liquefaction of the soil, not, not the fault pushing apart, okay? True or false? Animals can predict earthquakes. True. 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 And it's false-ish. Ish. Um, the problem is, the thing is, animals can pick this stuff up. They can. They, they are sensitive enough that they can pick up an impending quake or other kind of event. But the problem is, it's not a measurable thing. You can't use it as a predictor. Like all of a sudden, a dog starts going crazy. You're like, earthquake. No, it could be like. Squirrel. I mean, that's what it could be. We don't. It's not a measurable. It's not a measurable metric by which we can say something's happening. Like fish are acting weird. It's like feed them different. It doesn't mean a quake is coming. But the squirrel you know? sensed it. Right. Right. Well, the oar fish washed up in Japan. They just died. It's just not. It didn't mean there was a quake. I remember like like last year, like these oar fish are all washing up, and everyone's like, it means it's happening soon. Didn't nothing. Nothing happened. So it's like, yes, they're sensitive, but we can't. It's not a reproducible thing. So, because every time your your dog acts weird, it, you're gonna do, what? Run to the, the hunter, hunter, hunter table. Okay, okay. Then what is the straight dope of the San Andreas, Los Angeles, and us? The straight dope is that the San Andreas fault is a continental transform fault uh, that extends roughly 1,300 kilometers. 810 miles through California. It forms the tectonic boundary between the Pacific and North American plate, and its motion is right lateral. So it means, like I said, we move closer to San Francisco. Um, uh, the, the fault divides into three different segments uh, with different characteristics and a different degree of uh, earthquake risk. The most significant being the southern segment, which also passes about 35 miles of, Lo of Los Angeles. Again, lucky, lucky us. Okay, um, the official line, this is the official line uh, on the San Andreas is like due to its length, it can only deliver a maximum of 7.8 uh, magnitude quake. Um, however, others argue that it can deliver an eight and one or greater due to the fact that we now know that not only do we have more faults, including one which goes right through downtown Los Angeles, earthquakes could also jump faults. So. When you get to this kind of size of a quake in a place like this, the info really becomes kind of theoretical. Um, so, you know, so even though the, the official line is 7.8, eh, maybe not, maybe not. So, and uh, so we simply really, we actually really, we just really don't know. This, the, 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 again, the size of a quake is based upon, again, the length of the actual fault. But with multiple faults, it just adds to the whole dynamic and how those will interplay Oh, we can only speculate. We don't know. Um, our job is simply to be ready for whenever it comes. Uh, it could be years. It could be soon. We don't know. Um, you know, right now everyone's freaking out because the ring of fire is going, but then nothing could happen. You know, the pro the thing is, don't cry wolf. You know, all we could say is that we don't know. Is it going to happen? Yes. When? Eh, I have no idea. No idea. Well, and there's. Did the article come out? To just less than half a year ago from, from both Geological Survey and, mm -hmm. uh, and also people from Caltech. Caltech was saying 99.9% and uh, yeah. the U.S. Geological Society was saying 85% uh, that it was going to happen for sure. Mm -hmm. The largest one to be scared of uh, within the next three years. And that's yes. why, uh, uh, and my question is why did uh, Lucy, uh, Professor Lucy, resign uh -huh. or, or go into. Uh, uh, yeah. She, she moved. She, she left the state. She's a lot. Yeah. Um, she left the state. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Taking off my taking off my official uh, yeah. cert hat, which I'm not wearing. I'm tired. I'm tired. Yeah, I. Uh, guys, it's in the mail. Yeah. Things in the mail. <laughs> I don't know when. I mean, it could it could be tonight. I don't know, but it's in the mail. I, they say thirty. Years. I know it's not gonna be. I, my personal opinion, based upon things like this and just my own sense for whatever that's worth. Yeah, this thing's in the mail. Get ready now. 
Caltech said three years, give or take 25 years. So yeah, so it's like, there's a good estimate. Thanks, guys. That's, that, 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 that's, a, that's a level of, they say it absolutely has to happen in the next 30 years. Yeah. We, we just don't know, but. And what everyone it, that said that will be retired by that point, so there yeah. won't be drawn up like. Yeah, so be, off. just, just so be ready yeah. now. It's, okay. look, the, 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 thing, the thing's in the mail, all right? It's in the mail. So the, the, the thing is like, what do we do now? Okay, so um, our job is simply be ready. So, you know, no one can say when this thing is exactly going to happen, but for us, it's to be mindful of the reality and it's simply and to not be ready for something like this. Quite frankly, I find completely ignorant, okay? Because a lot of people, what I keep hearing from people is that, well, when it happens, we'll figure it out. And it's like, well, figure out water, figure out food, figure out first aid. What are you going to figure out, you know? Everyone else is figuring it out. Yeah, everyone else is figuring it out too. Trust me, people who have been like getting prepared for years are going to be like, yeah, we're going to, even even guys like us who like have our, all the things and the stuff and the thing, we're, there's we're going to be yeah for a while, okay? I so the first thing that's going to happen in an earthquake is my generator will be destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What happens like also not oh fine I got a generator well my generator. wall just Here's fell down yeah. on it. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Um, well, we don't live in fear. Uh, I believe in a resourcefulness of a community that can endure an event um, as, such as this and be ready for it, yet not dwell in it, which means we don't think about ugh, doom all the time. Get your stuff together, hang out, know, know your neighbors, and you know, have, your, have, a, have a plan for your neighborhood. Uh, so let's look at the reality of what this would likely be like and be ready for that. This was put out by uh, USGS. I think, it is, I think it's, pretty, it's pretty accurate. Um, I might interrupt it here and there, but... Here we go. This is the straight dope and what a big one would look like. It's a sunny morning in Southern California. Across the region, 7.5 million people are busy at work. Several hundred thousand of them are commuting to jobs in different counties, far from where they live. Over 200,000 commuters work and reside on opposite sides of the San Andreas Fault. Today, these families and many others across the region will be separated. Eighteen hundred people will die. Fifty-three thousand people will be injured. And two hundred thirteen billion dollars in damage will occur. It's 10 a.m. The largest earthquake to hit Southern California in modern times has just begun. Some people react appropriately. Others don't. In the intense shaking, nearly fifteen hundred buildings collapse. Infrastructure is severely compromised and 300,000 buildings suffer significant damage. The rupture travels 200 miles northwest along the San Andreas Fault. Violent shaking lasting as long as two minutes in some areas. Finally, the earthquake is over. Many of the lifelines of Southern California have been disrupted. A large number of people are trapped in collapsed buildings. Over 1,600 fires start, some turning into super conflagrations. Millions of people are trying to use their phones, causing the system to become overloaded. In the months ahead, there will be tens of thousands of aftershocks. Residents will struggle to recover from the earthquake. There will be no water for weeks or months, and no electricity. Traveling from point to point within the city will be extremely difficult and 255,000 people will be displaced from their homes. We are all in this together. We will suffer the consequences if we don't do our part right now. How quickly life gets back to normal after this disaster is up to you and those around you. Your level of personal preparedness will determine your quality of life after the quake. It's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher, a first aid kit, and enough water for each person in your household to have at least one gallon of water a day for three days. Okay, wait, hang on a second.
So they just said, they just said, you can be weeks or months without without water. So now the the standard thing is to have at least 72 hours of emergency supplies, but they just. They just said weeks or months. So, yeah, three days is not going to cut it. Water is your most important thing. You can go a long time without food. You cannot go a long time without water. Have an emergency plan. Decide now where you will meet your family after an earthquake. Make sure there's a person out of town you can contact to let your loved ones know that you're okay. I'm not quite sure you're highly supposed to contact them when none of the cell phones are working. So, just flares. If you have a landline. Who has a landline? Of course I do. Okay, we have a landline. Actually, AT&T, they're trying to do away with them. Landlines won't work. Yeah, and also our landline went out after Northridge. Homeowners should be sure to bolt their house to its foundation. Consider whether earthquake insurance makes sense for you as part of your financial plan. Even if you're not a homeowner, you can secure your personal possessions against earthquake damage. Preparedness is not only for the home, but also for business. Be sure that your company has emergency plans for a major earthquake. Empower yourself and your family. Be prepared. So the same level of preparation you have for yourself, have for every living thing in your, in your place, including medications, anything like that. So these are exact numbers, of course. Um, exactly 1,800 people will die. Um, I'm kidding. This is, these, these, this is just rough estimates just based upon science and history. So again, these are rough estimates. This is what we're looking at, 53,000 injuries, 1,800 fatalities, um, well over $200 billion in damages, and a 20% chance of an aftershock, equal or greater than the initial quake. Okay, no power for days, weeks, or longer. Cell phones and internet will be out. All major utilities will be impacted, including water, sewer, and gas. The great thing that they did when uh, they, they built the infrastructure of the city is the, uh, the uh, I'm not sure who did it first, but uh, the sewer people went down, laid a trench, put the sewer pipe in, and the gas people were like, hey, look, trench. Can we put our gas in there? And the water people are like, hey, look, trench. Can we put our water in there? So all of a sudden, we have all three of these things all together, which will rupture all together. So we have this flaming poo water is what happens. It's just it's a mess. We saw this happen in Ventura, actually. If you remember the pictures of fire coming up from the streets. That's what, that's what happens. <coughs> there will be freeway collapse. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, yeah, good thought, guys. Not that I, didn't, I had any better idea of how to lay out the city, but that's the reality, which means your water will be out. It means your toilets will be out, and you'll have no power. So, yeah, mm-hmm, yep. Our water system is already ancient and bursting all of the time, you know. So let alone in a major scenario like that, it's going to be much worse and compromised or unavailable emergency services. Like I said, the fire department ambulances are not showing up to fix your arm or get you a sandwich. It's not going to happen. And if it does, it's not gonna be for a long time, especially in an event of this size. They're gonna be compromised themselves and what they do, they do an assessment of the city first to see what are the biggest priorities. So they're gonna be putting out some purple fire out on the 118 before they're even going to come to you. So you're gonna to need to be able to take care of yourself and your family and your roommates. Uh, uh, one, one of the important things to know is right now, like people keep talking about how they're making it illegal to collect your rainwater. Yeah. Which actually isn't true in any way, shape, or form. Right. So illegal to do other things that are, could be connected to that, but it's mm -hmm. a very strenuous connection. Right. One of the things the city is doing right now is they're funding people to get rain barrels and collect their own rainwater. Mm -hmm. So a, a 50-gallon drum of rainwater 
is a massive amount of water that's easily <coughs> treated, easily mm -hmm. used and converted to emergency water if you need to. Yes. And right now the city is subsidizing it if you want to get rain barrels. Yeah, Garcetti's our dude, man. I, I love yeah. this guy. Um, and so yeah, we're in other places and actually in other states, they are making it illegal to collect or, collect rainwater. But here, thankfully, like Elliot said, yeah. it's being subsidized. So yeah, water is your most important resource, <laughs> period. Period, period, okay. period. Um, you know our water delivery system, the water that comes to LA from mm -hmm. other Francisco yeah. did it 25 years ago. Yeah, we, we uh, don't have. Well, our, our water comes through this San Andreas Fault, doesn't it? It's yes. Uh huh. Yeah. And so, just proof. Mm -hmm. so, so there's that. I mean, Garcetti's on it, but it's too late. I mean, I'm gonna say it's too late, too late, but it's it's too late. Should have been done. Should have been done 30 years ago. It's a big job. Uh, it's a big job. Here's here's a possible answer for everybody: mm -hmm. is uh, to get the 55 gallon drums. Of mm -hmm. Yep. I got two of them from, from uh, SOS. I'm thinking of getting a third. Yeah, get them and take the water and have water filtration. One of the best things that I that, that I, I recommend everyone to get, it's 1999. It's a life straw. Mm. You can drink out of your toilet with this yeah. thing. It was designed for third world countries so you could drink right out of a swamp. It filters everything out. <clears throat> I'm currently building a... Um, um, uh, standing water, though, is only good for three years. You yeah. have it longer than that, you need to dump it and refill it. Yeah, you should keep up on it, but a life straw will filter that out. Also, there's a ratio of um, um, how many drops per, of chlorine per gallon. Well, it's, it's five years. It's yeah. Five well, if you use Coast Guard approved chemicals, five yeah. years. Yeah, <laughs> but these are one of the things you just, you just swap out. Yeah. You there, swap out. There's actually two life straws. Mm -hmm. One will filter out viruses, mm -hmm. the other one, the smaller one, mm -hmm. will only do bacteria. Right, so there's there's the larger one, and I I have one of those. It's oh, probably in my my bag. Um, matter of fact, let's see if I can find it. Um, so how how many gallons will that thing do? About uh, thousand or more. Okay. Thousand or more. Yeah, it's here somewhere. Yeah. And then you got to change the filter. No, you just you just replace it. See, get a couple of them. Yeah, change it. Um, there's other many other really great water filtration systems. Uh, one of the things that I'm building for theory is a, water, is a uh, solar powered water condenser, which is basically a solar powered dehumidifier that runs in through a filter to filter out because the water that comes out of a dehumidifier is just disgusting. Yeah. Um, filter out the metals and all that sort of stuff. And it's like free water, free water. I can produce five gallons of clean water a day. So um, now also the things to be prepared for, again, you're going to be without a period of time without basic utilities or services. And we're all going to suffer some sort of material damage. You're going to lose dishes, pictures, <laughs> furniture, pets. We're going to suffer some sort of damage. No one gets out of this without some sort of loss. I mean, look, all, all of our dishes were a loss at our place. And there's so many things that got broken and shattered. It was just, and there's no way to fully, fully, fully prevent that. So just kind of emotionally be prepared for something like that. And there's a great likelihood that injuries um, that we need to treat ourselves until emergency services become available. So this is why I highly recommend uh, the CERT program. There's a class starting again in these areas in May. This will also teach you first aid. Please, please, please have a first aid kit. Know how to treat injuries. Know how to splint broken bones because it's gonna come to you in order to treat yourself and your family and your neighbors. Have the basics done. All those resources are online through the Red Cross, through many, many, many things. This is readily available information. So know the- and red cross classes are free. And cert classes are free, by the way, as well. So it taught me how, how little I know about this day. I was like, oh, now I know just about enough to start. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and cert is very, very, their, their first aid program is very, very good. Knowing how to do head to toe, triage, all these sorts of things. It's, it's great information to have. And I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Um, oh, he, these are questions for the brewery. Um, will a smokestack fall? Um, that thing is actually all steel. Oh, okay. That thing is all steel. Matter of fact, they checked it after Northridge, they checked it after everything, not a, not a crack in it. So that thing is solid steel the entire way down. It's more steel than it is concrete. Because that's the first thing I think, oh, that thing is falling totally down on, on everyone. Um, <laughs> will the buildings fall down? Um, most of them won't. Uh, we're a big metal box here, like the 620 building, those buildings. Those are four foot concrete buildings. Those were built to withstand a 9.0 earthquake. Some of the masonry buildings, eh, not 
so sure. All the uh, brick and mortar, you know, it's all reinforced, but it only means it comes down in bigger chunks. Um, I still, again, recommend the same, the same drill, which is you get under something and hold on. Because quite frankly, even if you could try to get out of the building, if it's an eight or something, you're not getting anywhere. It's like running on a stone trampoline, okay? And actually, this, the statistics are, if people who are injured or, injured, injured or die have moved more than five feet from where they were. That's, that's, that's a fact, because all of a sudden they start running, they trip, they fall, they get hit with something. It's like, find the closest thing, get under it, and hold on. Broken ankles are the most common injury in earthquakes. Yeah, because they're, tr like, like I said, yeah. it's trying to run on a, on, a, on a concrete trampoline. That scene in San Andreas where he's running across the dam, no way, dude, <laughs> no way. Bounce all over the place. I think it was 86. Um, Whittier earthquake. Mm -hmm. I was working at, at, at the uh, Bonaventure Hotel. Mm -hmm. And this doorway like this, I was just hanging out. I had uh, television sets to, uh, to deliver mm -hmm. uh, carts. I was trying to save them from falling over, and I said, oh, this is stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I actually hung on to the edge of, mm -hmm. of the doorway, and it was jamming me up and down like a jackhammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no way I could walk on Yeah. Yeah, there's, there was no way. Even in the Northridge, we couldn't either. I was I like, I hit, I hit the ground, and I started... Did you say it? Okay, yeah. So I watched cars bounce like tennis balls during the Northridge. North oh, yeah, right. yeah, no. Like, literally, like, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, no, I had, I had, I, there were so many crazy... I had friends who were peeking on acid with the earthquake. Oh, here. No. Okay? Oh, no. Yeah, totally. They were just like, I'm like, seriously. My one friend, she ran out of her, ran out of her underwear. Her, afterwards, she, she literally, she had her bookcase, and she just... Wrap masking tape just all over it, just for some sense of control. And I've I've done something. I'm like, Julie, what the hell is that? It's like masking tape over just uh, sweetheart. All right. The, uh, the, during Northridge, one of the fire stations up there, mm. uh, their engine yes. jumped around and actually went sideways, so they couldn't actually pull out. Yeah, they bounced the entire yeah. engine. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand gallons of water. Two thousand gallons of water. Yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. So yeah, running. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, you'll probably injure yourself just by trying to run. Um, and what about all the beer at Barbara's? Uh, sorry guys, the beer at Barbara's, all the booze, loss. It's a loss. So don't, you know. Wait, what? The booze is gonna be a loss, unless you keep yourself in a plastic ball. I thought you said no fear. No fear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, in your preparedness. Plastic uh, jokes. Plastic bottles, dude. Plastic bottles. Um, yeah, the greatest risk is obviously falling glass and debris and stuff like that from inside places and uh, fires from pro propane canisters. We don't have gas here, but we have propane <coughs> canisters. Please make sure all your propane canisters are secured. And they have flexible hoses, okay? Like, we drilled ours right in the wall. We put a wire right around them so it, it'll bounce around, but it's not going to pull off, jump around the room, and shoot, fill the room with propane. So secure your propane canisters. I, I got some propane cans, uh, smaller ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, sounding like a, I can put uh, things in between the. <laughs> yeah, I would have them. I would have them secure. Chances of them bouncing around and rupturing are probably not going to happen. Trust me, I know what it takes to rupture a propane canister. <laughs> uh, it takes a lot. Um, the ones that you're concerned with are the ones that are actually hooked up to a, oh. a hose. So your dryer, your stove, things like that. Those will ricochet around the room and when you have like like we have we've got like seven or eight on hand tie them all together tie them all together and secure them to something so they don't they'll bang around but they're not going to launch across the room possibly knocking off the nozzle or something like that because that would suck um yes yeah, so and all the glass booze is going to be a loss um okay so have an emergency plan for your studio here at theory um we agree once we have checked on each other we have a meeting place it used to be what were mailboxes, but it's still kind of the same location. We meet out there. Um, this is important. This is a great. This is one thing you can do right now. Keep boots and a flashlight <coughs> under your bed or in a bag tied to your bedpost. Because the answers are we're usually, we're usually going to be in bed. That a high percentage of that, we're going to be in bed. So flashlights and boots by your bed. So for all the obvious reasons, no power, glass everywhere. So. Some people get more hardcore, they can have a helmet, eye protection, or like me, I even actually drilled a handle <laughs> into the, like, the, like, you know, the people have in the tubs. Drilled it right in there in case I'm actually bounced off my bed and I get to hang on to something. But I, that's me. I, uh, <laughs> so meet a place for your roommates. Emer emergency, 
Emergency Everybody contacts knows. written down. So what can happen even if your phones aren't working? Um, so as long as you don't have, don't have your stuff on here. Don't have your stuff on here. You know, because everyone thinks, oh, look, I have this magical box of salvation. It's all here. It's no, this is not going to work. Have them printed out. Your parents' numbers, family members out of state. Because what can happen, even though your cell phones might be, go out, there's people like a number of us who are ham radio operators, even though I cannot provide you supplies, because everyone says, oh, we're kind of theory if something crazy happens. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, what you can do is like, you can give me a number and I can call your sister in Idaho and say that you're alive. I could contact somebody else and then they can call someone else. I can hit somebody in Texas, Phoenix, pretty much anywhere in the United States, I can hit on my radio. Granted, my antennas stay up. If not, I'll just put them back up. It's just a wire. How many so, people here actually know and have memorized phone numbers? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the few things in the world I actually know. Yeah. yeah. Have them memorized, have them written down and put away, along with uh, physical maps of your area. This is really important. Have a physical map of your area. We are so been attuned to get away, and everything is on here, that we can't get to the corner store without Google Maps. So please have a map of your area. You know the places in, the way out, where the bridges are, all that sort of thing, so you know how to navigate. Have a Thomas guide in your car. I know they don't make them anymore. You can still find them, but have a Thomas guide. Yeah, you can find, please, please, please. This is really important because you're going to need, at some point, you may need to have to navigate around, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I can't, where's, it's not, I, stupid phone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be like that. So I, I, I'm amazed at how many people do not have physical maps or know even how to read a map. Anymore. So this is, ugh. okay. Um, plans for reuniting with family members and roommates. So if all of a sudden you have family in the area, you have friends, you have family in Altadena, you've got family wherever, already have a plan in place to say, like, hey, here's the place where we're going to meet up. Okay, so you can, you have that set and then know how to get there for, through the map. So like, oh, this bridge is out. I have to go this way or this freeway is collapsed over here. I have to go over here. We're in a really weird area here because we have, we're, we, we are, we are, we've got two bridges, the five coming over the main and, and the, the bridge over <coughs> main coming over the river and we have two exit points. Yeah, Jake and I are trying to discuss a way to get into the train yard. <laughs> <laughs> finding a way to get through the fence, get around here, and get out that way. Because there's, n we're kind of, we're kind of isolated here. We're really, it's, it's, we're in a weird little area. It's also things if things go really south, we could block things off and put machine guns out or something. <laughs> um, um, also think about people with special needs. Here's really, really good for for people, especially here at the brewery, because this is my community. These are the people that I love. Um, there's a program called Map Your Neighborhood. I can't go into that for really, really a great detail, but this is a great way for you to know your neighbors. You basically have a block. You create a block in your area where everybody knows everybody else. Are there people with special needs? Who has, who has a, you know, a chainsaw? Who has this? Who has that? So you can all pull together and be able to uh, you know, get through this thing together because you can't be an I, I really believe you can't be an island in this. The notion of you're someone guy sitting on top of his roof with a shotgun is not the way to get through this. I think we really do need to be reliant upon one another, trust one another, and help one another. So keep that, keep that stuff in mind. Um, another thing that a lot of people recommend to have is just a simple, cheap walkie-talkie. Yes. They're multi-channel. You can definitely find other people in the area, mm -hmm. and you can find a place to gather, you can find a place to uh, share information. Yes find other people that are possibly hurt, injured, mm -hmm. or if you're hurt and injured, it's a good way to find other people that can come up. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I was actually going to get to that next. Yeah, um, okay. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I was actually going to get to that next when it comes well, to communication, but that's a, this is great. Um, I'll talk about it now. Patrick has been very, very good in being able to create um, those little handheld walkie-talkies. They're FRS radios or GMRS radios. You can get them basically anywhere. They're cheap. They have multiple channels. They don't go very far. However, Patrick has have been able to set up, we're setting up a network of repeaters that will actually be able to, tr you know, have that transmission go longer. Now, it will probably be chaos on there, but um, between the work that we're all doing, we can see if we can monitor and kind of keep 
that traffic controlled and orderly if it's if it's possible. Uh, but get pick up those little radios because have them for your roommates so you can talk amongst yourselves. Pretend you're like Burning Man. You're at Burning Man except with a lot more fire and rocks and debris. Okay, that's just pretend it's like that. Okay, solar but pick, pick those up and solar chargers. Uh, you're you're totally preempting me, Elliot. You're reading my, you're reading my mail. Okay. Um, Okay, we went through all this. I think the logic of securing your bookshelves and all that sort of stuff, moving your bed away from glass, keeping big objects away from your bed, take the mirror off the ceiling. Please, sorry, but bad idea. No, it's a tacky. It's dangerous. So, um, all right, yeah, it's plastic. I know you've thought this through, Elliot. Okay, um, again, move your bed away from windows, hanging objects, all that stuff. This is all logical, logical stuff. Okay, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, supplies, emergency food, water, medications for a minimum, minimum, minimum three days. The fire department, um, Red Cross, recommend a minimum of two weeks. Two weeks or longer. Depends on how motivated you are. Um, let's include your pets. Again, flashlight, batteries, uh, battery-powered hand crank radio with NOAA on it. Um, a fire extinguisher, a smoke alarm, which I should put on here, smoke alarm, first aid, and um, dust mask and duct tape. Duct tape is your friend. Just buy as many rules that you, there's so many things you can do with duct tape, it's incredible. Um, so uh, these are just kind of basics. Uh, as Elliot mentioned, even little, little small, they sell these little solar panels that are just relatively inexpensive. That way you can charge um, <clears throat> you know, any devices or your radios or things like that. Um, just a great thing to have. Um, <clears throat> I say a, a bit in a, oh, a bat at a time. Here's the thing. This, to many people, sounds really, really overwhelming. It's like, man, I've got to spend thousands of dollars on all these supplies, and I don't know where to start. And I, blah, blah, blah. Every time you go out to a grocery store, buy a couple extra things, put it aside. Buy a couple extra things, put it aside. You go to CVS, all right, I'm going to pick up some Band-Aids and 4x4 pads and gauze. Put it aside. So and slowly. Emergency candles. Emergency candles. Um, yeah, emergency candles, emergency lights. They've got solar powered. Th there's so many thing, cool things that are out there, uh, but have those. And, uh, and don't leave the candles just burning. Um, but yeah, all those, all those things are, are great. And I'm actually going to be putting out lists, Amazon lists, that you can go from the very simple, basic, to the serious, to the hardcore. And um, maybe I'll make a zombie apocalypse one. I'm not quite sure. Um, but um, we already got that. We'll got time. We'll talk about it. that's next month's class. Um, so yeah, just do it a little bit of a time because a lot of times people, you know, they're, we're artists. You know, sometimes we don't have the cash. I can't go spend a grand on SOS emergency supplies, but you can do little bits. You know, you can do it cheap. Honey and macaroni and cheese are going to be your biggest friends in this kind of emergency. That's good. Find carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go bad. They're not going to be infested with. Uh, insects mm -hmm. or bugs, anything like that. Yep. You can keep them stored forever. Yep. Peanut butter, raisins, Peanut things butter like this. This goes bad after about five years. It becomes incredibly toxic. Yeah. So you know, you know so <laughs> cut it off. <laughs> you check check your dates on stuff. Baked but yeah. Beans. Baked beans are good. Yeah. Baked beans, all this sort of stuff. But you know, you, you, yeah, you do have to maintain it. Swap it out so you have it all sudden. Now it's like, oh look, I've got this can of tuna that's seven years old. Um, yeah. Swap the stuff out. You know, because that means it's a loss. It's like all of a sudden, hey, look, food. You know, and just eat it and replace it. So just slowly build this up over time. So, so you're not overwhelmed. Um, again, family documents, insurance papers, ID, all that banking stuff. Have that stuff like in a waterproof place in a bin somewhere, because you're gonna you're gonna need that. You know, because if you have like homeowners insurance things like that, your banking statement, you're gonna need to have to prove who you are. You're gonna need to have to prove that you've got an account. All that stuff, sort of stuff. So that's logical. Um, Cash and small bills, because if you need something, it ain't going to be cheap, okay? And they're not going to be able to make change. You're not going to be able to use your ATM card, all right? You're going to need to be doing stuff in cash. Ideally, you won't have to buy anything because you've got your stuff all sorted out because you came to this class. Um, but if you do and you have to buy, you know, a, a $20 bottle of water, you can't, okay? Um, sleeping bags and tents. Huh? And if you only have a 20, yeah. that bottle of water is going to That bottle's $20. It's a $20 bottle $20 of water. water. Exactly. You know? Um, and uh, make sure your pets are edible. Okay, sleeping bags, tents. Um, <laughs> set of clothes to put aside. Uh, 
bleach and a, me a medical dropper. That's so you can do uh, water. You can kind of purify your water. Water filtration, like I said, life straw. And there's other really, really great systems that are a little more expensive. I've got this two bag system where you got filthy water in here and clean water in the other one. It's good for two million gallons. Um, uh, matches in a waterproof container, personal hygiene. This is good because you're not gonna be able to take a bath. Um, you can, but it's gonna cost you water. So you gotta, eh, eh. All right, gotta make your choices. Um, then, you know, wet wipes, things like that. Um, uh, mess kits, cups, plates, things like that. Just look again, imagine you're going to Burning Man at the drop of a hat. That's, that's the way you should look at this. Um, uh, a whistle, whistle's kinda good. Whether you have your whistle on hand is, you know, debatable, but a whistle, all of a sudden, like something that you're stuck somewhere, because you're going to have search and rescue people coming out. If buildings collapse or you're stuck, they're gonna, the whistle is the best thing ever. So just have a whistle. They're cheap. You can find them anywhere. And, um, okay, uh, personal sanitation. Oh, yes. Sorry, kids. This is the reality. Because, uh, yeah, because, uh, yep, it's poop in the can time. Um, what it is, yeah, because your, 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 your sewage is not going to work. So you've got to think ahead. What if my sewer, my toilets are not working? Mine's not working now, because, and it's just because it's Tuesday, okay? <laughs> Someone went and broke it yesterday. I'm not quite sure what happened. I walked in, there was water it. everywhere. I don't, know what, I don't know what happened. So if anyone, you gotta go somewhere else. But it's like, like look, this is, not, this is the way to go. So you're gonna have to think about how to take care of your business, okay? It's a pretty cheap way to go. That's actually pretty resourceful, a little pool yeah. noodle. Yeah, that's, that's cool. It's very Gigsville. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, a um, little break. Any questions, comments? Yes? I've always wondered why a tent and a sleeping bag? Like, if your house hasn't fallen down, well, do you go? Right? Okay, well, if, well, if your house, well, what if your house isn't safe? And your you have to be outside. You'll shelter in your backyard. Yeah, you right? shelter in your backyard. If, if, if all of a sudden you're scared of the next aftershock, you'll probably be in your backyard. Sleeping. Yeah, or say there was a where say there was a fire. Like we're gonna say say there was a fire. We got we got to camp outside. It's like the place no longer became safe. Or if the ceiling is unstable because you do have structural damage, right. you don't want to stay in the house. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. So in case you have to shelter in your backyard or somewhere else, you know that's you want to stay in your property because that's where your stuff is. Yeah. Exactly. Um, tents also very easy um, to have, eat. Where's your house? Historically, caused violence and looting in other cities. Yes. Now, here's what I've seen happen. I didn't hear the question. Uh, have, have, have we seen uh, earthquakes cause looting and? Yes. Northridge yes. earthquake. My story was I was working at Fort MacArthur. And violence. And by the time I got to Fort MacArthur, the morning of Northridge earthquake, they were already looting. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, because once that happens, people take start taking it's advantage crazy. of the situation. Um, they will either they, they they panic or they see an opportunity. They see an opportunity it's like, hey, the world just went crazy. I'm going to go get a TV, um, or it's like I got no food, or that kind of thing. Jake and I run these scenarios all the time, which is like I think here at the brewery we have over 900 plus people, and I'm thinking we could people here could probably stone soup it for about three or four days, and after that. People are kind of on their own. So you're gonna have people, hunger does terrible things to people. I see in a disaster, the, we see the best and worst of people. We saw on 9-11, a whole city mobilize to help the people in Manhattan, you know? And then at the same time, someone's like, hey, free TV. I mean, people are weird, you know? But yes, the answer to that is yes. And um, so you gotta also think about, it's things I gotta think about. I'm, I'm known as that guy now. Everyone's gonna, Come here. I'm like, in the north no. of the quake, the, the one thing that happened is five minutes after the quake ended, people were looting all the stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing that was happening is people left everyone's house alone. They were only looting stores, they were only looting shops. They mm -hmm. weren't breaking into houses, they weren't breaking into private residences, or anything like that. Yeah. There weren't cars being stolen, but any shops were being just torn apart. Yeah. Except Especially electronic shops for some reason, because you know, there's no electricity, let's all go steal TV. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a great idea. Um, yeah, 7 Eleven, 7 Eleven, Smart and Final, those places are going to be toast, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, After five days, when people actually do run out of food and water, and there is no power, you can start to expect they're going to go after homes. Yeah. yeah, and we saw this, we saw this in New Orleans, um, we saw this in a number of places, when it's an extended uh, an extended time of getting things restored. 
because, like I said, hunger does really, really terrible things to people. So do you recommend? And make, your plan for your make it neighbors in, in your, yeah, other. exactly. You and don't want to tell people what you're doing, but you want to encourage them to do something for, their, for themselves. Yeah. Exactly. That's why. That's why I, it's a debate, you know, with me. It's like you know, people know that we have stuff, but we also have metal doors and roof access. Yeah, in Northridge, we had we had a we had a generator going, and that got everybody. Oh yeah. yeah. Everybody had an extension cord, and everybody knew what right. like, we had going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. That's why I love uh, solar panels and batteries, and and uh, get a solar panel, a deep cycle battery, and an inverter, and you're you got you got something going there. So do you mind it? This is a, that's a philosophy. Um, so I legally don't own a gun. Well, no, I mean, but do, I, you, as, uh, do you recommend? That is, you know what? That is uh, that's something I'm not going to go choice. either way on. That is that is up to everyone individually yeah. if you feel like you need to own a gun. But if you do own a gun, know how to use it. Know how to use it. Oh, yeah. Actually, know how to use it. Uh, it could it could come to the point where you may have to defend your home. Um, so I lift that everyone up to uh, personal, also, personal choice. Know how to secure it. Know how to, secure it, know how to yeah. use it. Um, make sure you have enough it. ammunition and be a, be a good shot. The, the worst thing you could do is need to, need to use your gun and not be ready to. Yeah. And that you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to hurt someone you love. So if you do decide to get a gun, practice with it so that when you do need to use it, you know how to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But does that happen in other earthquakes where people steal each other's supplies? I'm wondering with the historic, like, whatever has happened, I feel like that's a good indicator. Um, Tom, you have we haven't had, <laughs> LA County has not had a countywide disaster since the floods of the 30s. So we haven't had that issue. What about other earthquakes countries? Earthquakes have or... been localized. Katrina is our last large area disaster, and they were having those issues. Yeah, I think when you get a large scale event, because we haven't had our services, you know, collapse. When you see sort of a societal kind of collapse, when you see things like Haiti and so forth, then you're going to see people stealing other people's stuff. Quite frankly, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, like I said, you're going to see the best in people and the worst in people. It's, it's what happens. There are the extended uh, disasters. Mm -hmm. Extended disasters. Once you start going on over five days, weeks, yeah, and a lot of stuff drops off the news. Haiti's still recovering, dude. Yeah, Thailand's still recovering. Thailand's still recovering. Yeah, Nepal's man. still recovering. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that drops off the news because it just got replaced by, you know, the Kardashians or something. I mean, it's just like... eight tornadoes went through Indiana. It actually took us eight months to recover in the cities. Yeah. They dropped off the news after three days, but in eight months, those people were without power, they were mm -hmm. without water, they were without mm -hmm. sewage for eight months. Yeah. And there was... 10,000 people yeah. without those utilities for a long time, mm -hmm. without the way to get to cities to get them because the roads were crushed. Mm -hmm. and nothing. Yeah, and the same so, thing happened up north with the fires. We yeah. have, a, I have a good friend, Audra, who's doing disaster relief still up north. We also had the and National Guard shipping in and bringing people everything they needed, but it was a matter of like rural Indiana where they had to walk literally 15 miles to go get water and food yeah. and medication mm -hmm. from the National Guard. So yeah. it's one of those things that even and that, that, that was just 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. That was not the dark ages by any means. Yeah, and, so. uh, and, not all, and not all emergency services are, are the same. I like, with the fires up north, my friend who was up there, it's like, Red Cross, bureaucratic disaster. FEMA, no good. Samaritan's Purse delivered them. Until it made it such a bureaucratic nightmare for them to get people help, they were like, okay, we gotta move on. So they, people make, bu bureaucracy is a horrible thing. Um, when I say personal needs, <laughs> Here's the thing, if you're gonna be riding through a long period of recovery, get something fun for yourself. <laughs> Put a little something fun in there, you know? Oh man, a deck of cards, a chessboard. Deck of cards, chessboard. Look, are you a smoker? Are you a drinker? I don't know, like, look, I don't recommend being drunk during a disaster scenario. However, you might want a little <laughs> sip of scotch somewhere kind of at the end of the day after you pulled your friends out of the rubble. Okay. And vodka can also help purify water. Vodka can help purify water, keep in plastic bottles. Take drops per cup. Like I do. Um, okay, uh, when it's happened, okay, we, eh, we've pretty much gone over that, except for uh, the vehicle. All right, with the vehicle, pull over uh, at a clear location, uh, free of hazards, and stop. Um, stay in the vehicle with the seatbelt fastened until the shaking stops. Uh, turn on the radio to get information regarding the quake and any uh, damage to roadways that may have uh, occurred. You think it's tough to run in an earthquake? Try driving in one. 
You know, because a lot of times you'll think like my tire's out and all of a sudden your car is over because you're, you're trying to drive on a thing. Slow down, pull over and pull to the side. Try to not be on a bridge or under a bridge, but get off to the side, pull over, stop. And don't slam on your brakes. Do not, yeah, do not slam on your brakes. Slow down, slow down, like, like, uh, like, like black ice or something like that. Don't, don't be slamming on your brakes. Um, High-rise buildings, it could be all the same kind of concept, except understand that fire alarms and sprinklers are going to go off. Uh, the coastal area, move to higher ground because they generate tsunamis. Again, not in L.A., uh, but up north they will. So uh, They expect the tsunamis to be south-facing beaches. Right. 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 That's One thing right. about the high-rise buildings <laughs> is very important. <coughs> the buildings, the high-rises in downtown are designed to, to sway in an earthquake. In fact, if you've been up one during a high wind, you actually feel it sway. Mm -hmm. What's really scary is that pieces of the building may actually come off yes. during an earthquake. And if you are in the street, that stuff is going to come down. Uh, I think it's they say it's three times the length of the or the height of the building. Mm -hmm. So if you are outside in downtown LA, get inside. Get inside. Place. Yes, that's see, that's a great point. If you're outside in a place that's that's urban like this, get inside. Get inside. Because all that stuff is going to be sh shaken off. Now, the building may stand. They're, like I said, they're designed to flex. They've got these, some of them have these massive rollers underground, so the thing does this. But your cocktails and everything are going to be going all over the place up to, there. To that point, the high rises, if you're up top, you're not going to feel it immediately. The amplitude of the wave has to build up. Yeah. So the shaking will be done down below when you're going to start shaking it above. Yeah. It'll be kind that. Of an interesting standing wave that creates. But it's going to be really scary when you're up there. That'll be a fun ride, man. And, and to your point, get inside. We were told, I studied architecture in the 80s mm -hmm. and 90s, and that's what I did. Um, we were told <laughs> those curtain walls, those glass curtain walls in downtown, they're just going to shatter. They're going to come apart from the building. They're meant to. They're not structural. Mm -hmm. You really stand a good chance of drowning in glass. Yeah. It was the amount of glass that's going to. They are yeah. safety glass. It's going to be glass. little tiny little yeah. pieces, but. They're going to come down. It's going like, to be raining on. It'll be raining you know, very fast. Thousand pounds of, of little tiny squares falling on. Yeah. All the time. Uh -huh. And no high-rise building, modern high-rise building, has actually collapsed in there. Yeah. They're, they 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 are designed not to not to fail in that respect. They'll be jacked up, but they're not going to fail. After you, if you're in a high-rise after the earthquake, are you okay with the use of stairways going down, or should you wait until somebody? Like, I would I would. No. Get out. Yeah, I'd get out. I would use. use I would use. The, I would use the stairs. Um, but then again, think about where you're going. Like, all right, I'm out of the building. Where's my car? How am I getting home? I'm not taking an Uber. So think about. Yeah, think about where you where you're gonna where you're gonna go. And there's gonna be aftershocks too, because again, you're not gonna want to be outside for when an aftershock hits. Um, you have an earthquake in your car. Ah, very good question. Everything, uh, imagine everything you would probably kind of need for like, it's like a set, having a 72 hour bag. Um, matter of fact, hang on a second. In here, <laughs> all right, in here, I've got, I've got, I've got water, <laughs> smokes. I've got water, food, flashlights, um, multi-tool, um, booze, um, <laughs> uh, stuff to start fires with, uh, laundry lint. Laundry linen's good. Laundry linen wax is really, really good. Laundry so, linen Vaseline is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in a, multiple uses. So yeah, so things that you can survive for, for three days on. It's called a 72-hour bag. Uh, basic first aid, things like that. Um, uh, rain poncho, emergency blanket, stuff like that. A change of clothes, uh, socks, all, all that kind of stuff. This is great to have in a, in a bag. Also, you don't need many changes of clothes. Yeah. Socks and underwear is all you're really going to need. Yeah, I have one. Ch I have one change of clothes in here. Yeah. I don't need. I don't need a suit. Um, here's first aid stuff. Uh, glow sticks. Rule uh, tissues. If you don't tend to wear tissues all day, you wear mm -hmm. socks. You wear heels often. Like don't really the rules. You're throw out next. One of the most important things to think about when you're doing a 72-hour bag or get home bag mm -hmm. is, can you carry it for any length? Walk yeah. Because mm -hmm. if you can't walk a mile with your bag, there's no point. You're not going to carry it with you. Yeah. And here's what Ellie was talking about. Here's a little 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 GMRS radio in there. And I'm gonna make sure I have enough in the house that all my roommates have one. Too. And like I said, you'll be able to get on. You'll be able to get on the radio here, and you'll be able to hear. You'll be able to hear. So and be able to at least minimally communicate. What's GMRS radio. Um, uh, GMRS is um, basically it's just a fancy word for uh, 
General General Mobile. Radio General Services. Mobile Radio Services. Yeah. And FRS is Family Radio Services. They overlap. Um, a walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's a walkie-talkie. It's the same thing you use at Burning. We use at Burning Man. Those are FRS GMRS radios. They're yeah. very similar, and so they often get lumped together. Yeah. So they, they sell these these bug out backpacks, like on Amazon, things like that. Like earthquake preparedness backpack. Mm -hmm. You can go on there and you can look at them, and they're going to be two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. You can look at the ingredients because they list everything mm -hmm. that's in there. You can go put that same backpack together for about forty dollars. Yep. That's that's a, yeah. That's exactly. You can have one in your bedroom closet. You can have one in the trunk of your car. You can have one in your garage. It's, it's really not. And, yeah. and you don't have, like Kevin was saying. You don't have to put them together all at once. Mm -hmm. You know. Are you supposed to have more than one? one? I just keep one in my car. I figure from uh, home, it's in my yeah, car. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like also, it's uh, sometimes depending upon you know your your resources. Like say you can't get to your car or or whatever, you know. Uh, but I have one that I just carry. It's right there, so I can go right out the door with it and throw it in my car. Um, so yeah, and it's like again, what's, what Elliot said. It's like it's like you look at the ingredients. They're like, oh, band aids, gauze, things like that. So go to CVS and go pick them up for cheap. Yeah. You know? 99 cent store. 99 right? cent store, exactly. You can, you, can, you can equip yourself and get that stuff ready for like practically nothing. Backpacks you can find used anywhere. Any of the first aid kits you see that have medication in it, it's typically the expiration dates on those medications are about a year out. Yeah. Uh, it's not something to really worry about. It's just remember if you're deciding to buy a first aid kit that's pre made, uh -huh. those medications don't have that much life on it. Yeah, so go and just buy your own stuff and think about other stuff, and anti-diarrheal, th things like this. Have all that kind of stuff, stuff there. Um, again, first thing you do is also you check yourself for injuries first before you go help anybody else. Because oftentimes when adrenaline's going and you're injured, you don't know it. You know, it's like you go to help your roommate and you're like, what? It's like, what? There's this thing sticking out of your head. You know, check yourself first. Because it's just like, you know, put the oxygen on yourself first before you help the kid. Because who likes kids? Um, <laughs> sorry, that's just me. Um, and uh, and it could protect yourself from further danger. Put on long pants, long sleeve shirts, uh, sturdy shoes, work boots, things like that. You may even have eye protection, stuff like that. Um, so, if there is rubble, it will be sharp. Yes, so you exactly. Don't want to be crawling around in your shorts. Okay, yeah. Then first thing, obviously, you put out any small fires you may have. If you cannot put out a fire within ten seconds. With one thing with a fire extinguisher, get out. Get out. Then it's too big for you to handle. Um, rec I recommend you learn how to use your fire extinguisher. You don't fire at the fire, you fire at the base in a, in, a sweeping, in a sweeping motion. And if it doesn't go out, by the time that fire extinguisher is done, get out. get out. It's too big for you. And fires will, can overtake a place depending very, very quickly. I've watched the videos. It's horrifying. It's like, it's, yeah, so get out. Um, Let's see, uh, then clean up spills, anything like liquids, things like that, especially like things that are toxic, gasoline, all that sort of stuff. Clean that stuff up or any kind of potentially hazardous stuff. Get those, get those all cleaned up. If, if there's smoke and you, you can see a cloud of smoke, get on the ground. Yes. Because if you take one breath of that smoke, you will be on the ground. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. On the fire extinguisher, I thought that at one time there was something where Fire department or someone came out here to the brewery and serviced people's yeah. fires. That was that was us. Okay. Are that was us. We had a fire extinguisher it? day. Matter of fact, we're probably due to have another one. The Marx Brothers. Yeah, Marx Brothers. Marx Brothers are awesome. <laughs> Art got his. Yeah, they have um, And here, here's here. Let's do a real quick thing with fire extinguishers because we we just went through this. If you're going to get a fire extinguisher, get these, the ABCs, the rechargeable ones. Okay. Because what happens? And uh, we kind of did this. Remember made it know. Um, she got these from Home Depot. Um, these will work uh, once. They work once. These cannot be recharged. So if, if this goes out, um, it's a throwaway. These can be recharged. Costco does sell rechargeable ones, I think, in a pair. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do, they'll come out, they'll tag it with the year, the month. So it's, this is all now totally official. So these are the ones to get. These are like the best on the market. So have, have one of those. It's a worthy investment. They're like 60 some bucks. Get yourself, get the a fire extinguisher like this. Okay. Then you move outward. Then you help your neighbors. And, uh, and like I said, there's a th concept called the golden day, uh, which is um, if help arrives within 24 hours, increases survivability by 80%. 
which means that's how we take care of one another, whether it be search and rescue or things like this. I run this through my head all the time in terms of putting together search and rescue teams here if we're getting to go into a building. That first 24 hours, that's where it goes, and then it plummets after that. Um, yeah. I know if the brewery has a, um, a printed list of everybody that lives here, like at least the leaseholders, so that you can check off if, you, if I mean, going around to board door being like, this person you've checked in with, this person you haven't. Um, they do, but I think this is going to have to be something. I talked to Jake about this. It's something that we're going to have to self organize. Like, our block would probably be us and these guys over here, like Stosh and those guys. So we would all be like, this would be a block. Right. And, uh, or the 620 building. Each floor, each floor would probably be a block. And someone would be in charge of that. And that way we all kind of know each other and, you know, who, who, you don't have to divulge everything that you have, but we, we can at least check in on each other. You know, are there, are there elderly here? Are there people with handicaps that need to be taken care of? All that sort of stuff. That's all covered in Map Your Neighborhood. Yeah. Map Your Neighborhood. Look this up. It is really great. I, w I really, really want to get this um, implemented here for us. Have we ever attempted a contingency plan, an emergency contingency plan, just for the brewery in general? We have not. Jake and I are talking about this, too. Um, and what that would look like. If we had a long, say, say we had a three-month recovery, what would that look like for 900-plus people? Okay. Now, well, that was actually the, that was actually that was the actually a lot of people. Will, if it's really that bad, people are going to start splitting. Yeah. Quite frankly, it's what's going to happen. But then we look: Do we have to start digging the trains? Oh, do we have? Where I want to be if shit goes down. <laughs> I I'm planning on digging it. I mean, unless this place goes up in flames, you know, we're we're you know we're going to shelter in place. We'll be here, and then we got to think about what's that going to look like in the long term. Do we need to start digging the trains? Do we need to start doing all these other things? What if we have serious injuries that we can't treat? What if someone has an open fracture and no help is coming for an indefinite period of time? These are these are questions I run through my mind all like of the time. We could get a county or state subsidy for. We're we're talking about that too, but there's no way to treat an open fracture. We don't have unless there's someone who has surgical capabilities the EMTs here. EMTs can't do that. And EMTs can't do that, you know. And they would have to have all that. They'd, we'd have to have someone who's an actual surgeon or medic who knows how to do that with equipment on place. I was an EMT. You're just a medical. Yeah, <laughs> let alone, you know, all antibiotics, things like this, antibiotics, another well, good thing to have. One of the things that you can do is, it, and it's kind of creepy, but these, uh, these places that advertise online all the time, like selling Viagra, they also sell antibiotics. So you can and get an, the, the top three generic antibiotics, real, they don't need to cover your most conditions. Uh, What's mm -hmm. that? The real antibiotics. The real antibiotics. Yeah. yeah. Are, and yeah. also, you could another another resourceful way to do is is uh, they're cheap. Is farm antibiotics, animal animal antibiotics. It's it's exactly what they're, they're, they're the yeah. same. They're the same antibiotics, and they're a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the feeling about expired expired medications? I mean, I know that like there's a certain amount of time that they can still be used, but uh, I mean, yeah. You know, like what's a, what's a safe? Is it not safe? It's not unsafe. It's not unsafe. It just becomes less effective. Rule of thumb is. Yes, rule of thumb is good for a year after the expiration date. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe two. Yeah. But is there anything that becomes actually toxic, like after time over a certain? Nothing period? becomes toxic. No. no. No, it just becomes less and less effective. I went to an antibiotic thing by L.A. P County Public Health, uh -huh. yeah. and Insulin. they said something five years beyond mm -hmm. is still like ninety percent effective. Okay. This is a, this was an anthrax thing. So. All right. Okay. Oh, I heard something similar. I, so. I question some things like insulin. Some of the stuff that needs to be okay. refrigerated. Insulin's good up to a year if it's refrigerated. Three months if it's not. Three months if it's not. Three months if it's not. This man would know. Yeah. I'm diabetic type one. Yeah. Yeah, I need to know. <laughs> okay. I right. also could. It's rather horrible, but I could teach you how to get insulin out of cats, dogs, pigs. See, it takes a village. Well, one thing you, you <laughs> probably can do it takes a village. just for keeping back of your mind is you might want to keep it for yourself and not give expired drugs to other people yeah. that you don't know. The lawyers will come out of the rubble in about three months. And yeah, start yeah. Something. <laughs> exactly. If something bad happens to that person, you gave them a year old something. Mm -hmm. You know, prove I gave it to you, man. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but don't you just double up on the dose so it could be effective? That might be too much. Yeah, yeah. depends. No, yeah, you get that, a, you, that could actually you need to know what you're doing. Product. Really need to know what you're doing. It is no better. To, it is <clears throat> as effective as it was. Um, a prevailing wisdom I've always heard is better to do too little than too much. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially with um, so, and uh, 
that's basically it, guys. Um, go to CertLA.com. That'll tell you where the, the classes are. I rec highly recommend everybody uh, get their ham radio license. Also, a printed survival guide. Not online, but mm -hmm. a printed survival guide yeah. will actually do you a lot of good. Printed survival guide, printed first aid book. Yes. Keep that right in the back. I've got it, matter of fact, in the back of mine. Even though I've got it, memorize yeah. it, yeah. just put it in there. That way you've got, you don't have to think. You know, you can go through and like, okay, how do I do a tourniquet or something like that. Did Tourniquets are- sign up on our, for our mailing list? Yeah, anyone who wants to sign up for the mailing list, uh, Patrick will get you plugged in. We can keep in touch. Um, again, look up Map Your Neighborhood. This is a really, really great program for- it's something for, uh, we're pushing. <laughs> yes. Right now in the time too. Yeah, and, and we are a battalion. We are a battalion too. So that would, again, we, we would be we would be dividing up, up, up our compound into into blocks, you know. And wherever you live, like Jenny, you would see like your blocks, and you would have like say seven or eight homes, and you guys would all check on one another, you know. And it's a great way to to keep your place uh, safe, watch each other's backs, and um, share resources. And it's sponsored by the CERT. Cert spo sponsored by the Los Angeles Fire Department. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Battalion 2 is... Map Your Neighborhood was developed by the uh, Washington State Emergency Department. And they've deployed it extensively up there. Uh, LA City's pushing something called a five-step plan, which is really a get-together-with-your-neighbors, have meetings, figure out a plan. Uh, Map Your Neighborhood is a plan. Yeah. It's ready to go. It's already been developed and, and it's well done. being used by people here in LA. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. Oh. In Battalion 2, right now we have nine blocks, or is it nine blocks still, mm -hmm. Ben? Yep. We have nine blocks, and when Kevin was talking, I was saying, God, I wish he could have plugged a map your neighborhood slide in, because instead of saying this, this, it oh. would give you the seven steps right, to take right. care of that. Right, right. And it's a well, fantastic plan. Yeah. Map your neighborhood is it. now being deployed by the Red Cross. And yeah, some they're of us, the one sponsoring here. Yeah. yeah, some of us have uh, gotten trained as facilitator trainers so very soon we'll have information flyers yeah. and things like that and we'll start training what people. we're going to do with uh if you've signed up for the mailing list we'll get let you know about upcoming things and if there's interest in having a map your neighborhood training down here or a train the trainer we can definitely get that set up mm -hmm. yeah and ben knocked that out of the party your whole area is like your whole your whole neighborhood is, is pretty well, much that's covered. What, that's what Tom is saying. We've yeah. got nine blocks. Yeah. We started with a block and mm -hmm. then the next one and the next one and yeah. it grows like that. Yeah, and it's great. I saw I saw the map and it's just yeah. like you know sometimes by terrain, things like that. It's amazing. These guys have done amazing work. So um, that's it. Any questions? Well I've got an announcement. May tenth. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kevin will be doing a talk on disaster communications. Yeah. You can bring that. Yeah, May 10th, uh, Patrick and I are leading a, a, a discussion on uh, emergency communications over at Big Art Labs. Um, now that plays into like what Elliot said with like the handheld, the little handheld radios. You know, because most people are not going to go get their ham radio license and be geeks like most of us. Most of them, you're going to be just picking up the little handheld half watt. It's not as effective, yet it is something because your phones are not going to work. You know, this is a, a good way for us to discuss how that's going to look like in, in a, just on a day-to-day -day basis or in an emergency situation. So May 10th, Big Art Labs. Uh, we pick time? Seven? Seven o'clock. Seven, yeah, okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go over what, what you can do with that and how you can communicate up. So if you, you and your family need help, how does that play in with the rest of your neighborhood and the rest of the community? Right, and what we would probably do is... Um, is is implement a, a radio, some radio control because there's people like, bah, ah, you know, it's just going to be disaster. It's just, it's just chaos. So, if 900 people have radios here. It's, it's so, the way we handle it in ham radio um, is that someone takes what you call net control, which is like, this is so and so. I am taking net. I am net control. No one transmit unless you have emergency traffic. Any emergency traffic, go now. And then we. Pull, pull that stuff out so it's not just general chatter. Now people can completely disrespect it and jump all over it, but it's a way of managing chaos on, on the radio. So, any other questions? Yes. Well, you could get uh, some decent ones. Uh, I, I got a pair, a couple of pairs, mm -hmm. uh, for 56, 58 bucks off the, off the internet. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, easy. And they're five, uh, five, uh, five watts? No. no. The, the five mile radius. Five mile radius. Right. Ish. And that depends on terrain. Ish. Yeah. They say five Very miles, but uh, 
Yeah. 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 In, in, in the general of We have a focus tunnel going five miles, but we're like. If you buy a Motorola FRS radio, you're not going to no. hate it. If you buy some of the other brands, you might regret it later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you kind of get. I is, is a, a, a Midland. 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 Yeah, the Midlands, Midlands are good. good. Midlands are good. Yeah. Do you have a list of supplies that you said you were going to sell? In fact, yes. Uh, as soon as I get k1kmo.com up online, I'm going to have an Amazon list. So that way you have the, the basic. So I'm just the. For a list for two years. Yeah, little basic. <laughs> you pretty much probably already have the stuff. If you've I have gone. Some, but I don't have a lot. I don't have a. I don't have all of it. Yeah, well, I mean, we went over some of the basic stuff. I will have. I can give you a list. Yeah. Um, I will have a, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have a simple list, you know, and then I'll have a, you know, like I said, a kind of a serious list. Okay, I'm going to be serious about this, and then I'll have hardcore, which is and like. When is this? Where is it? I when will it have it online. Up. I'm going to do it ASAP. I just have to get my the, uh, the database installed and get the website up, and I already have the Amazon account. Are you going to be nice? You're saying huh? by midnight? No, no, by midnight. Well, Actually, quite frankly, if you just, if uh, I could probably, I, the lists are all public. The Amazon lists are all public. You can just go there right now. You know, I want to clean it up a little bit because I kept like, oh, I'll throw this up, I'll throw what's, this up. So I want to organize it. What's the place up in the valley that is that SOS supplies? SOS is on the on the west side, but North we North also North. Have, we also have a location, major surplus in Gardena. North. North. Major North. surplus has as much stuff, but it's closer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, and SOS is amazing. I, yeah, I SOS got, is great. SOS is pretty much where I got almost all of my stuff. Also in Pasadena, there's safe and ready. Yeah, so is, that, is, that Nancy's? is that Nancy's? That's Nancy's. Yeah. Okay, yeah. SOS products is in North. Safe and ready. It's on Rosemead yeah. Boulevard yeah. and Delmar. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you very much. Stay safe.